Hey everybody, I thought I would present a game of Status Pro Baseball. I haven't had that played on the video for a while. So I pulled out the greatest teams uh, game that I got off eBay. And it has, as you might imagine, the greatest teams, or what they, some of the greatest teams they have uh, sets for. And in this game, <clears throat> I decided to choose the 1986 Mets against the 1984 Tigers. See Alan Trammell there in the picture on the box. So that's two of the teams that come with the game. And I thought I would uh, not only play a game, but kind of go slow and show the inner workings of the game for those who have not seen it in a while or at all. And uh, this is no longer in production by Avalon Hill, but there are plenty copies on eBay. You can even, I believe, get a PDF version of this. And... Um, you don't have to go through the whole board thing uh, if you can't find it. Now, let's go ahead and talk about this game. This One of the things that people don't like about this game is there are no dice. But instead, they have what are called fast action cards. And the fast action cards drive the game engine. So we'll go through everything on this fast action card in a minute. But I wanted to show that for those that aren't familiar with it that there are no dice in this game. It is strictly a fast action card type game. All right, so I've got the board set up ready to go, but what does that mean? Well, I've got my two teams. The home team is over here. The visiting team is over here. So I've got Jack Morris on the mound for the Tigers. And Jack Morris's card, he has a starting rating of 15. So that's where fatigue comes into play. So I put a pawn here on the number 15 to start the game for Morris. As he gives up hits and runs and walks and so forth, he will start being reduced in effectiveness. Once he gets down to zero, he loses all effectiveness, and it's pretty much time to take him out of the game. But he's going to start as a 15 right now. For Dwight Gooden, he starts out as a starting rating of 13, so he is on the 13 uh, part of that. All right, now let's look at the game engine and what determines an at-bat. So let's say our first at-bat of the game would be Lenny Dykstra against Jack Morris. There is a number on a pitcher card that ranges from 2 all the way up to, I believe, 10. And right here, it gives you a range. So Jack Morris, in this case, is a PB 2 to 6. On the fast action card in the upper left-hand corner, there is a random number that says PB, and you refer to that on the first flip of the at-bat. And if the number on the card falls in the pitcher range, which in this case it did, being a 4, then we would be looking off of Jack Morris's card for the result. If it fell out of that range, then we would be looking on the batter's card. So in this case, we say it did because... The four said that's what we're going to go for. So in this case, that's all you need that card for. You don't use it for anything else. It's just used to determine who is in control of the at-bat, whether it's the pitcher or the hitter. Now, it looks like it's almost a 50-50 type game, but not really. Not like Strat. Strat's a total 50-50 game. This one is not so much. The better pitchers are going to control more of the action because they have a higher range in their numbers. Some pitchers have up to 2 to 8 or 2 to 9 which means they're going to get most of the results off their own card. And in payoff, I mean, I'm sorry, in status pro, majority of the time, the better results for the pitcher come off the pitcher's card. So if you're, if you're favoring the pitching team, you want the results to come off the pitcher card. All right, now we've got the PP, PB factor to know that we're under Jack Morris. Now we need to draw another random number and see what it, the result is. The random number in this game, this is a base 8 game, which means the numbers go from 11 to 88. Every number is between 11 and 88. So we're going to flip another random number and reference this card to see what it is. If it's a 24 or less, then that we know that there's a base hit. If it's a 25 to 36, we know he struck out Len Dykstra. If it's 37 to 44, we know he's walked him. These three we can ignore because no one's on base, so they can't have a pass ball or a wild pitch. And if it's 48 or higher, he's going to make an out. So we take the random number off of the deck, and we flip it. 
and read what the random number says. And the random number shows 44. So we go over here to Jack Morris. 44 is the last number in the walk result. So Lenny Dykstra has just walked. So by walking Lenny Dykstra, he would lose a, a point of effectiveness. Lenny Dykstra would be on first and we'd be ready to go. Now Lenny Dykstra is a pretty good base runner and the player cards are rated such. There is a speed rating where A is the best and E is the worst. So he's got a speed rating of A and an OBR rating. OBR is, uh, I don't know what the total acronym stands for, but it's his, his base running quality, like he, the ability to go from first to third on a single and uh, be able to score from second on a hit, that type of thing, uh, from, be able to score from first on a double, that kind of thing. That's where we would result there. So let's say, for instance, after this, we wanted to steal. Well, what we would do is we would flip one card and check the random number, and then there's a stolen base chart up top, and we would reference that, and it would tell you whether he's safe or not. So let's say, for instance, we wanted to steal. We would flip a random number, and it would say 24. So the random number is a 24. We'd go up to the stolen base chart and look for a 24, and it says any runner rated speed A or B would steal. So if it was a C stealer or a D stealer, he'd be out. But in this case, since he's an A stealer, he would be successful on a stolen base. So that's kind of how that would work. Now let's go through the fast action cards themselves, because I said I was going to do that. So let's look at, the, look at the fast action card. I'll take just one by itself instead of the whole deck. All right, so we've already seen that the PD number, PB number, and the random number, what their role is in the game. Let's say, for instance, that on that result for Jack Morris, instead of it being a walk, it was in the out range. Well, how do we know what kind of out it is? Well, what you do is you flip a random number, or flip a next card, and it gives you an out sequence based on what type of hitter is at the plate. Lenny Dykstra is given a result of LN. LN. That means he's a left-handed hitter with normal power. So we go to the out sequence, LN, and it says he has fouled to the shortstop, or popped to the shortstop, however you want to read it. And that would be the end of the at-bat. However, if there is an asterisk behind the number, that means there is a possible error on the play. Well, how do you check for an error? Well, you'd have to flip another card and see if there's an error or not. So we'll bring in the next card. And the next card... We go up here to where it says error, and it says none. So that means there are no error on the play. Now, most of the cards are going to have none written on them, but once in a while, there'll be a range. So let me see if I can find one that has the range on it. Here we go. Had we flipped this, it would have said error 2 to 10. So that means if the player involved had an error rating between 2 and 10, he would make an error. And then you'd flip again to see if it's an error 1 or error 2, and their charts, which I'll show you in a minute, to dictate what the result was from that error. But if there's no asterisk, you don't have to check that. There is a caveat, though. If the base hit comes off of the pitcher, I'm sorry, off the batter card result, and it gets a base hit, you still check for an error, whether there's an asterisk or not. So the rule book that comes with the game is pretty simple. It's I think it's four pages. It's uh, pretty straightforward. It's, it's very well written. It gives you basic play steps, basic play results. It tells you about stolen bases. It gives you miscellaneous results. It explains the pitcher reduction. Um, it explains a little bit of the left-right element of the game. And I'll show that in a second. Um, well, actually, I'll go ahead and show it here. It says, when using this rule, and you don't have to, this is an optional rule, when using this rule, players should consult the variable factor for left versus right element chart. That's a big, long word <laughs> for uh, what they're talking about that. And this is the variable factor for left versus right element. So if a left-handed pitcher is facing a left-handed batter, an 11 through a 15 would normally be a hit for that left-handed batter. But if they're facing a left-handed pitcher, it's either going to become a strikeout, foul out, or you know, so forth. Conversely, an 87 to 88 is normally an out, but if a right-handed batter is facing a left-handed pitcher, 
Those turn into singles, either with a two base advancement or a one base advancement. And the same thing is flipped over for right-handed pitchers. If he's facing a lefty batter, that 87 to 88 becomes a single. But if he's facing a right-handed batter, and you see the difference here, the left-handed batter against the lefty gets penalized up to 15. The right-handed batter only gets penalized to 12. So 11 would be a strikeout instead of a hit, and 12 would be a foul out to the catcher instead of a hit. So that's um, the way they do that. There are injuries in the game. So there's an injury table, and certain results in the game can send you to the injury table. Base running is already figured out for you. There are different charts based on the base running situation and how you have the infield, whether it's in or back, and it, it will tell you, based on the result, what happened. And also there's error ratings. Remember I said the error 1 or error 2 or error 3 or whatever. This tells you about the error ratings. And then if you get a guy on first base, you flip it over, and there's a man on first, and you go through all those charts and so forth. There's also a clutch chart. And anytime there's a runner on base, then you could get a clutch defensive check. And they're called clutch defensive tables that you would check on. And each pitcher or each uh, fielder is given a clutch rating. So let's look at Lou Whitaker. He's got a clutch rating of four. So the higher number is the better number on that. So if we look at the clutch rating, it's done by position. So second baseman, a CD4, clutch defense four, he could possibly make a great catch of a fly out. He could turn a double play. Uh, let's see here. He could make an error. He could field a ground ball, but throw wildly to first. Great catch of a line drive. Different things. But a lot of times there won't be any result that happens. It'll be normal play because 43 to 88 under a CD4 says that no action occurs. But you can see here, if it was a CD1, then it would have to be a 12 to be a double play, but he's got a lot bigger range here, 21 to 26 to make that double play. So the higher CD numbers take care of that. There's also an unusual play, and this is where the injury chart can come in as well. They're called Z results for unusual play. And when that comes up, that's a random number or random card that instead of having a number on it, has the letter Z on it. And I probably should have taken the time to find one of those, but now I've got to search through the deck until I can find one. Or I may just have to forget it because it may take me forever to find one. And I don't want to you know, lose what I've got going on with the video and lose uh, what people were doing here. But just trust me, there's a Z value in there on these cards. But it only happens rarely because you don't want to have... Obviously, unusual plays happening all the time, or else they would no longer be unusual. They would be usual. So, the Z results, if you get one of those, then you simply go to this table, draw another random number, and read what it says. So, say for instance, it says here, uh, a 22, non-dome game, game is halted because of rain. Uh, let's see here, 24, fan reaches out a stance for foul ball, obtain a new random number. 11 to 28, fan touches ball and umpire calls the batter out. 31 to 88, no play as neither fan nor fielder can reach the ball. Uh, 25, the pitcher develops a blister and must be taken out. Batter pulls a muscle. Uh, let's see here, I think there's some about, uh, here's one, only when a man is on first. Runner is out stealing second, argues, and is ejected. So you can get some ejections in the game. Number 11 says catcher argues over balls and strikes, gets ejected from the game. Uh, see here, batter voices too much displeasure to umpires, ejected from game. So see different things like that. Now, if you get to the Z result and it's a 45 through a 78, then you go over to the fielding table and you get the unusual fielding table based on a lot of times on the clutch defense of the particular fielder you're dealing with. So that's the Z chart. But like I said, the, the instructions that come with the game, it's very simple. There's only, like I said, four pages. So uh, it doesn't take you long to get this set up and get going. Um, it gives you how to read the fast action cards and things like that. So but this is, like I said, the, the way it's set up 
on the table when you're ready to actually get the game going. This is the way it would look on the table and then we'd have the fast action cards all shuffled up and to protect the randomness of the cards what you want to do is after every three innings is you want to flip the cards over not only flip them over but reverse them because each card has four results on it each card has two results on each side so not only not only would you want to flip the card over but you'd want to turn it over as well and that way you can get your uh, randomness a little bit more in play. I'm sorry about shaking this but I'm trying to do this one without being on the little stand so that I can move around to the board and, and look at different things that are out there. Um, there is a sacrifice bunt chart up here so if you want to bunt each player is rated with a sacrifice rating like in this case Lenny Dykstra is a double A so you go up here under the double A column draw a random number and take whatever the, the result is. There's also a pitcher adjustment chart that comes into play and it says here that in the seventh inning and only when a pitcher is working on a shutout. So if you got a pitcher pitching a shutout through seven innings, it says here uh, if he's not allowed to run through six innings, he's eligible to use this chart. And using the chart, certain fast action card numbers may be changed from hits to outs. So in other words, if it's a 16, that would normally be a hit. That's now going to become a foul uh, to the catcher if it's off the pitcher card. If it's off the batter card, there's no change. Uh, if the random number is a 16, 17, or 18, scored as a pop-up to, this is in the ninth inning, scored as a pop-up to short, and it's uh, scored as a foul out to the pitcher on the pitcher's card, or batter's card. And then a BD result even in the ninth inning would be scored as foul outs. So that's if a pitcher's really rolling along and he gets that extra boost. That's what it's talking about. So hopefully I haven't confused anybody who hasn't seen the game before or made anybody dizzy by me moving the camera. Um, I'm going to go ahead and try to play a sample inning just to see how it goes. So what we're going to do, I've got the cards all ready to go, the fast action cards. And we're going to go ahead and get going between Jack Morris and Lenny Dykstra, first at bat. So we're going to flip the first fast action card. And the result is a 6. So we know that a 6 per Jack Morris's PB rating means we're going to be under Jack Morris. So we're going to look at the next fast action card for a random number. And we get a 27. So we go to Jack Morris under 27, and we see that falls in the 25 to 36 range. So that means he just struck out Len Dykstra for out number one. Now it's Wally Backman, the second baseman. So we start with another fast action card, and we get a five. So a five, again, means we're under Jack Morris. We get the next fast action card. We get a 28. So 28 under Jack Morris, and that's another strikeout. So he has struck out both. Dykstra and Backman. Third hitter in the order is Keith Hernandez. So we do another flip. We get an eight. This time the eight says we are out of range because this only goes two to six. So now the focus goes to Keith Hernandez's card. Rolled a, or I got a roll on the brain with dice. We're going to flip a fast action card and reference that Keith Hernandez card to see what we get. So the flip is a 76. And if we look at 76 on Keith Hernandez, that's going to fall in his out range of 58 to 88. So we need to figure out what kind of an out it is. He is a left-handed normal hitter. Left-handed power, norm, left-handed hitter with normal power. So we're going to flip another fast action card and check the out sequence at the bottom. And the out sequence at the bottom, left normal, is a G3 with an asterisk. That means he grounded to first base. First baseman, in this case, is Darrell Evans. Well, Daryl Evans, since it's an asterisk, we have to check for an error. If we look at Daryl Evans' card, fielding card, as a first baseman, he has an E1. So if we flip the next fast action card, and on the error thing, here it says 4 to 10. If it says 1, then that means he made an error. If it doesn't, that means it's a good play. Flip is none, so that means that Daryl Evans would field that, take it to the bag himself, and the inning would be over. So that means we would go to the bottom of the first with no score, and Dwight Gooden would be on the mound. 
facing Lou Whitaker. So Lou Whitaker would get the first at bat. He's going to check Gooden, who is also who is a 2-7 on his PB rating. But the PB result is an 8, which means control goes to Lou Whitaker. So we'll check the next random number. That's a 76. High numbers are generally outs. 76. It's going to put that in a 48 to 88 range, so that is an out. He is a left-handed hitter with normal power, so we're going to check the out sequence of the next card. And it's, this one says everybody flies to left, so that would be a fly out to left no matter what kind of batter you were. So Lou Whitaker would be out. And now Alan Trammell, the batter. Trammell is a 5, so we're under Gooden because of a 2 to 7. So we're going to flip another random number. That's a 22. So we go to Gooden under 22, and that's going to be a single. 18 to 22 is a single. So in this case, Alan Trammell would fight off a good pitch, single to right field, and Dwight Gooden, he would lose one on his reduction rating because of that hit he allowed. So that, And we don't check for an error when the bat, base hits off a pitcher card. I only do it when it's off a batter card. So that would result that at, or resolve that at bat, and Kirk Gibson would be coming up. So Kirk Gibson, based on this next random number, may or may not have control. The random number is a 3, so that means we're under Gooden. And we see what the random number is going to be. Random number is a 37. So we go to Gooden, 37, 24 to 38 is a strikeout. So Gooden just struck out Kirk Gibson. So that's out number 2. It brings up Lance Parrish, the catcher. And the result is a 7, which is under Gooden. So 2 to 7 fits Gooden's criteria. It's an 87. All right, now this is where, had Lance Parrish been a left-handed hitter, he would get a base hit off of that variable factor chart, which is up here. But since Parrish is a righty and Gooden's a righty, the 87 is going to just be an out. Lance Parrish is a right-handed hitter with power. So we'll check the out sequence of a right-handed hitter with power. In this case, everybody grounds to first, but there is an asterisk, so Keith Hernandez has to make sure he makes the play. Keith Hernandez is a fielder, has an E rating of 1. So again, this next result has to be a 1 in order for him to make an error. So even on this result previously of the 2 to 10, he would not make the error because he's a gold glove fielder. So I'm going to flip the next random number. It's probably going to say none, and it does. So that means Hernandez would make the play, and the inning would be over. And in fact, you would have to check for a double play had there been less than two outs. And that's based on the table. So on the table, a G3, well, look at that, a G3 and a man on first. G3, man on first, infield uh, halfway. So G3 would say double play. So had there, there would have been a double play had there been less than two outs. Unless the runner, the batter, was an A or B, then he would be safe at first. He would beat that relay for the double play. But in that, this case, Lance Parrish, slow runner, would have been doubled off. And that is one complete inning of Status Pro Baseball, and that's just the way the game is played um, you know, through that. So we'll try to go through another inning a little bit more quickly and uh, give you the – so you can see the speed at which this game can be played. Um, this is not a game which you're you know, necessarily – trying to play in 10 minutes, but you don't want to spend an hour on it either. You can get in a, <clears throat> a rhythm on these cards. Flipping these cards, it's a little bit harder for me to do with one hand because I'm holding the camera with the other. But you can really get into a rhythm flipping these cards, and you can get through these innings pretty quickly as long as the pitchers are doing what they need to do. So we'll check the Daryl Strawberry at bat. That is a, a clutch batting rating, but there's nobody on base, so we ignore the clutch batting rating because it only occurs when somebody's on base. So the next result is a 7. We know that 7 is, is going to be strawberry because Morris only goes 2 to 6. So the random number for strawberry is a 44. We go to strawberry's card, 44. That is a strikeout. So Daryl Strawberry with the whiff. One away, and here's Gary Carter. Carter, a 7. Again, we're under the batter Carter. And it's a 44. Gary Carter, 44, is going to be a walk. So Gary Carter reaches first with a walk. And we reduce Morris by one because of that walk. Brings up D.H. Kevin Mitchell. It's a four, so we're under Jack Morris. And it's a 64. So a 64 is going to be a regular out. Kevin Mitchell is a right-handed power hitter. 
So we'll see what the out sequence says. Right-handed power hitter. It's a line drive to third with an asterisk. So we need to check Tom Brookins to make sure Brookins doesn't make an error. Brookins' E rating at third base is a 3. So I'm going to flip the next random number, and as long as it doesn't mention a 3, then he will make the play. And the next random number is a none for the error. So Brookins made the play, and there are two outs with the runner still at first. And that brings up Ray Knight, third baseman. So Ray Knight. It's an 8, so we are under Ray Knight. And the next flip's a 51, so we go over here to 51. Barely in the out range. He just missed a walk. So it's an out. He's a right-handed normal power. So we'll flip the right-handed normal power result. We get a GX6. Now the X means it's a fielder's choice more so than a double play. But there is an asterisk, so we have to check Alan Trammell to make sure he didn't make an error. Alan Trammell has an E rating of 3. So we're going to check and make sure this result is not a 3 or higher. It's a none, so he made the play. And there would have been a fielder's choice on that ground out. But since there's already there were already two outs, that just becomes a third out of the inning. So with that in play, that's the end of the second inning, or top of the second. Now we go to the bottom of the second. Daryl Evans, the batter, against Dwight Gooden. And we get a flip of 7, which is under Dwight Gooden, because his PV rating goes 2 to 7. That's a 45. So a 45 for Gooden. He will walk. He will walk Daryl Evans. So we knock him down to an 11. Daryl Evans is at first with nobody out. Chet Lemon. It's a 9, so we are under Lemon this time with that PB rating high number of 9. So we're under Chet Lemon. The result is a 78. That's going to be an out. Lemon is a right-handed power hitter. We check the out sequence. The out sequence says GX1 with an asterisk. So Gooden is the one being checked on. He is an E4 according to his card. So we'll make sure he didn't make an error. And he did not. And now we go to the table with a runner on first and a GX1 with the infield at double play depth or halfway if you want to call it that. Uh, back, however you want to refer to it. GX1 infield back batter safe. Run on first, out at second. So like I said, it's basically a fielder's choice. So Lemon would take over as the runner at first base with now two outs. And Rupert Jones, the left fielder, would step into the box against Gooden with two outs and a runner on. There's a three, so we're under Gooden again because of that two to seven. The random numbers are 48. 48 is the lowest out range you can have for Gooden, but it is an out. Rupert Jones is a left-handed power hitter. So we check the out sequence on a left-handed power hitter, and that is a pop-up to the first baseman, Keith Hernandez, and that would end the inning. So that's two innings of status pro baseball. And as you can see, after two innings, even with no score, the deck is now about halfway on each side. And you can even imagine had there been more runs and hits, there'd be more flipping, and this deck would go down further. But after three innings, like I said, it's suggested that you take it, you shuffle them, flip it, and not only flip it, but turn it around. And that gives you more optimal random results. So that is a quick look at Status Pro. There are cards out there that have the actual lefty-righty splits on them. And I have a few seasons like that that I've gotten. They sell them on eBay, PDF. A version pretty cheap PDF uses about 10 bucks um, that you can buy and they fit right in with this game and you just read whatever the column is it's if you're facing a lefty then a certain pitcher is going to have a PB rating versus lefty and a PB rating versus righty same with the hitters they're going to have two columns uh, one versus left and one versus right so that's an option there uh, there are plenty of regular cards like this that are available on eBay as well the standard cards um, so, like I said, Avalon Hill obviously is not making this game anymore, but there is a strong uh, Status Pro community out there, and eBay certainly is reflective of that uh, with people selling uh, primarily PDFs, but there are people out there that do the printed sets as well. They're a little bit more expensive. I think the printed sets are about 35 bucks a season, where the PDFs are around 10 to between 10 and 15, I think, for the PDFs. 
Um, you can also get, if you don't want to buy the actual game or can't find the game, you can get a PDF of the board and a PDF of the fast action cards that you can print out. So, you know, the community is still strong out there for this game. Um, one of the things against the game, I guess, if you want to call it that, is there no dice. And, you know, most times I'm in the mood to roll dice, but when I'm when I have something a little bit different, the, the fast action cards, this game brings back memories because I had this game back in the early 80s when I was growing up and a teenager. And I remember, in fact, it's the first uh, baseball board game I ever had. I had some computer games, uh, like Earl Weaver Baseball and so forth, but Status Pro was the first board game I ever bought. I went in the toy store one Christmas, I think, and saw it on the shelf and checked it out. And there it was. So that brought back memories playing this uh, over the years. And uh, for anybody that maybe has done that in the past and hasn't gotten back to it in a while, check it out. It's a it's a really good game engine. The results are very realistic. And uh, really, the, one of the stars of the game is the board itself. It's a, it's really an interesting uh, dynamic to have all these charts on the board and so forth. But the majority of the time, it's just going to be these fast action cards. Occasionally, you will need to reference the charts. But even that, once you've played a while, you kind of memorize the results. You'll know that a ground ball or that a... Uh, a, G, a G4 uh, with a run on first is automatic double play. You'll know a GX4 is a fielder's choice. And you know a G4A means the batter's out and the runner's advance. That's just little things you'll memorize over time. So that's uh, Status Pro. And a quick run through and, and my take on it. And hopefully if anybody has not seen this game before or not in a while, you, it, you've learned something on this and if it's piqued an interest, certainly check it out in, on eBay and see uh, what you can find out there. And uh, that's going to pretty much do it from here. I just wanted, I didn't want to take a whole lot of time with this. Just wanted a real quick run through of a how to uh, and some of the uh, inner workings of the game engine. Just for those who have not seen it before or, or have seen it very little. So if you're a ardent status pro guy, you're probably bored to tears or just scanning the video to see what kind of errors I made, which I probably made many. If I did, please leave them in the comments and I'll certainly tighten that up. Um, hopefully I didn't make too many errors on this. I don't think I did, but you never know until you go back and look at it later. Um, but that's going to do it from here. I'm going to go ahead and, and get going with something else, but I did want to put this out and uh, give people another... Uh, look at another game because obviously games like APA and Stratomatic get the most play on YouTube. So games like Replay Baseball and uh, Payoff Pitch and Status Pro maybe don't get quite as much exposure. So I wanted to give this a little bit more exposure. And so Status Pro, um, like I said, if you can't find the box, the actual game on eBay, you can get the PDF version. And I'm sure it works just as well. So that's it from here. I hope everybody has a wonderful time playing whatever game you choose to play in whatever fashion you choose to play it. And I will see everybody down the road.